Episode 138. 138? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Dude, we're almost at 150. Hell yeah, man. So, I mean, that was, that was, a, that was a rough start, but we're just going to go ahead and do it, man, because it'll be more natural, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Uh, teach, introduce our guest today, man. Um, well, t- we're actually in Vegas in um, one of the... Uh, I've got some serious space envy here in this studio. <laughs> um, we're in uh, the studio of Snipped. Uh, and... Um, this is at, uh, I guess, is 107 East um, Charleston, yeah. Charleston Avenue. And uh, he's got Suite 220. And, um, dude, I got to tell you, you got this set up really nice in here. I'm, uh, Thank you. I've got some serious studio envy. Thank you so much for having us oh, in here, man. We just kind of came in here, pushed you around a little bit, you know, and was like, give me that, move that over there. <laughs> no, it was a complete mess here before you guys got here, so... Had us do a little spring cleaning and uh <laughs> I saw that man, I saw the post you put up. Man, that that makes me happy when I know that we're motivating people, man. Thanks for Yeah. Uh, no, thank you guys. Really do appreciate it. So what um where are you from originally? I'm born and raised in Vegas, so <sighs> like <laughs> kind of a unicorn, just uh been here a few decades. So. Spoiled, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I'm I'm from Florida. I'm from the Panhandle, Florida. You know, luckily I escaped and um because it's it's uh, the area I'm from is not very cultural, yeah. and I got to tell you, dude, just right outside the door here of this uh, studios is so nice. Yeah, it's <laughs> my gosh. If I'd have grown up around here, I probably would have been a lot more, a lot better artist. Maybe <laughs> I, I say everything you see around here now. It's probably been going for about. I mean, we we actually really started with first Friday events, and uh, ah. that's kind of this area is called the 18B. So it's 18 blocks. Uh, which originally was the Arts District here, still is the Arts District, but uh, spans pretty much all the way to like Las Vegas Boulevard and comes down to about Charleston area here. So took over a couple more blocks and then it's starting to head down a little more and we're, we're developing a whole coffee, bar, gallery, just food, everything district here. So Lifestyle, the yeah. art lifestyle, <laughs> man. Bring him in. Bring it's him really, in with the really, lifestyle, man. I, I hate to say it, but it's really gentrified quite a bit, so... Yeah, I, I feel like it hasn't always been like this, right? But it's still pretty artistic, though, man. You know, I see some smashed up dumpsters up and down the street, yeah, yeah. which is always nice. <laughs> and what I mean by that for you guys, what do you mean smashed up dumpsters? You mean that that like sounds horrible, man. them with their cars, <laughs> they run into the damn dumpsters or something? No, no, like with some with tags, tags and stickers and stuff like that. Nice, colorful dumpsters, you know what I mean? Not yeah. just these plain ones, blue or green or gray or whatever. It's nice to see that, you yeah. know? You definitely know you enter the artist sister tree when you come down here, so. Yeah. Yeah, and even some of the walls, yeah. you know, um, some of the exterior walls has got some, some really nice pieces going up. Yeah, um, yeah so man. So how I, long did you say it's been like this, pretty much? In the current state now, I yeah. said over the last five years, it's been a lot of redevelopment with the businesses going up and down the streets there. Main Street, it's just huge. A lot of these businesses are finally starting to embrace the street artists around here, so you're getting a lot of people putting exterior murals, interior murals. Um, I'd say COVID... The one good thing that came out of COVID here was just the amount of mural work that happened over the last year here. Everything was boarded up. Everything was oh, yeah. just blank, and they had some of the artists go out there and just go go at it. <laughs> Sweet. So gave people a new appreciation for them. It's awesome. like, hey, man, it's like we gave you guys a chance to step up and be the entertainers at the time that, that needed entertainment, yeah. you know? And we were able to do it safely, obviously outside. And yeah, exactly, with masks on. Yeah. <laughs> And if you want to be safe, they're actually respirators, you know, when you're when you're spraying and everything. So um, it's even more, uh, you know, more protective than these N95 masks or whatever we're wearing, you know, because, you know, when you're spraying, you, most of the time you're wearing a rest- Actually, you know, if I'm outside and there's a good steady breeze going, you know, I don't worry about it so much unless it's going into my face. But um, so when did, um, when you were growing up here, what, uh, when did you realize you were going to be an artist? Like, when I was always doodling, drawing as a kid. Oh, okay, uh, went to college at UNLV, went there for um, I went there for computer science originally, and then I kind of ah. got into I, I, I'm horrible at math, <laughs> ah. anything with algebra, trigonometry, I, I can't do that stuff. So, the most simple transition to stay on the computer was to go to the uh, fine arts department <laughs> and uh, got into graphic design here. And just really started just creating stuff. Uh, I started working with a lot of iconography and things like that, and just very basic printmaking. So just kind of learning that craft. And nice. Took all the 
you know, the basics, drawing, color theory, things like that. So, but computer, uh, computer science, did you say? It was originally computer science, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly does that involve, computer science? It's just programming. Uh, at the Ugh. time, I got really into... Uh, Hacking, I guess. <laughs> so that's kind of where it all started. And then uh, creating. It's always, good, always used for a good <laughs> hacker, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I really got into that and creating the artwork for the programs I was creating. And once I hit 18, I kind of stopped doing that stuff. And I thought I would go to college for it. And that didn't quite pan out just because of the math issue. So <laughs> went to the arts uh, school. And that's just kind of where I fell in there. And I just. Dude, I feel you on the, on the math thing. I'm actually really good with math. The problem is I'm partially dyslexic. Gotcha. So I would I should I could easily ace a test, right? Yeah. But then I'd get it back and there'd be like, you know, three or four problems wrong. And I go back and I look at it and I'm going, Why why the hell did I put that number there? You yeah. know? What what the hell's going on with this crap? And then reading and comprehension and stuff? Oh, oh yeah. man, forget about <laughs> it. Forget about it. So yeah. Did art wa- uh, art is definitely a good way to go. Yeah. Did you watch that movie Hackers back in the day? <laughs> I yeah. did, yeah. Dude, me too, man. <laughs> I mean, I fell in love with Angelina Jolie in that movie, man. That was like the first time, you know what I mean? And that did that inspire you to be a hacker like back in the day? <laughs> I just always had a had an idea of like uh taking things apart and just seeing how they work and the inner workings and trying to figure out how to exploit them. Oh, and do, that you, was just, do you do that for your art too? Do you break down other artists and kind of like see how they do, do yeah, things like that? That's pretty much why I got the name snipped was oh, taking things apart, de- you know, decompressing. Well, you've it, already answered one of the questions I had for you. Okay. So snip then. Yeah. Oh, a lot of collage and, and just kind of moving things around that weren't originally there. So that was kind of how that transitioned. Um, I was obviously really influenced by pop art, so right, right. But, I, but dude, I love the layering. I love the layer. Yeah. Work. You know, like I said, we're in his studio, and he's got pieces set up all over the place, and um, just the uh, the layering <coughs> and uh, composition. You know, he obviously went to art school and everything. The colors, composition, everything are right on. Um, and you know what I've noticed is some of your pieces you have um, resin coated. Yeah. You know, basically means it has a shiny, like it almost looks like it's covered with water, you know, or, or glass, basically. And then some pieces aren't. And um, I always find it interesting to figure out which ones, you know, how do you figure out which ones you put the, you know, the, the resin on and which ones. Because sometimes if you, if you put them on the wrong one, then yeah. it's like. You lose depth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the ones where I, I add a little more layering, like if you look at that piece. I want people to really see that layering. Right. Um, a lot of pieces, commissions, people might say, hey, I want the resin layer on top. Or some people might just say, do whatever you want. <laughs> and those are the fun ones because I can kind of just play around with it. And as, when I'm finished with the, with the manipulation, I can figure out, do I like all the layering showing? Do I want you to feel that, you know, five or six layers under there? Or do I want it to all just look uniform and, and clean? So so the Johnny Depp piece right there, what different mediums are those? That's actually uh, my partner, uh, Tone Castle. So oh, okay. Yeah, he created that. And that's that's a piece that he and I kind of got together so you can see our styles uh, okay. mixing and matching. I see. I see. Um, but I know that he works with Airbrush quite a bit and uh-huh. spray paint. So We'll be talking to him later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look forward to that. Yeah. But, dude, um, so then from, uh, from the computer science, you went on to, you moved to, what was you said? Uh, computer science, then I went to graphic design. So Graphic design. That was kind of where that journey began. Now, graphic design, that's a monster, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to be good at, like, bugging people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 my, my major was illustration, and unfortunately, part of that was you got to be good at promoting yourself yeah. and bugging people. And I just was not good at that. Yeah, the commercial aspect of it. Well, I feel, like, I feel like out here in Vegas, it might be a little bit easier, right? There's so many, like, just, like... Not easier, but I'm just saying there's a lot of like businesses out here in a very small central location. It's like a big town, but it's also like a small town too. So yeah. it's kind yeah, of a lot, I feel of, like, lot of different kinds of opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Exactly. Right. Hotels may need it, right? Restaurants will need it. And there's like so many hotels. Some of the best restaurants in the world are yeah. <laughs> are in this area, man. Like I'm jealous right now because you know, in California, <laughs> all the fucking restaurants are like closed right now. And you guys have some sort of like sensibility. I mean, like uh I think there's indoor dining a little bit, right? Or We do have indoor dining up to 35% now. Okay. But okay. some of these businesses in the arts district are probably the most creative. Uh, there's a restaurant right over there called Esther's Kitchen, and they created these pods for outdoor dining. So you get your oh. individual little pod there. 
Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, you make a reservation, you come in there, and it's a little tent. I think you can – it was four previously. Now they've upped it to six at a table. So okay. <laughs> there, there's so many rules. It's <laughs> like, pretty smart. Yeah, uh, dude, last night, uh, Valentine's Day, took my wife and our kids – Really nice dinner to Katsuya in Encino. Oh, nice. Yeah, you'd think, right? <laughs> and, and actually, you know, when I was, heard the idea, okay, we're going to have to sit outside, I was like, oh, even better. Because, yeah. you know, I enjoy the food there and everything, but I would actually rather sit outside. Yeah. And so we were sitting outside, but unfortunately, it was so damn gusty. Oh, yeah. And the spot they had to set up was in between a couple of buildings, which created a wind tunnel <laughs> effect. And dude, there was just stuff blowing everywhere. And then I was like, "No, no, no, we're, we'll we'll hang in there. We're, we're gonna be okay." But then, <laughs> when I finally said, "No, this isn't gonna work," was one of the waiters has they had like these masks that have like a full face, <laughs> clear plastic thing. It's almost like a helmet looking thing. Yeah, came flying off. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> oh God, cover up. No. <laughs> He's caught in the wind here. Um, <laughs> And it came flying off their face, and I didn't see this. I just felt it hit me. It bounced off my shoulder, hit our table, knocked over some water, and then hit my son, and then flew on by. Jeez. And I was like, okay, no. No, this, is, this isn't going to work, no. Yeah. But, dude, so, um, yeah, the, the area around here is, is, is amazing. And you said you guys are going to be, um, you already have a, a coffee shop that, uh, that you... Yeah. We just opened uh, October. <laughs> so perfect timing right in the middle of the pandemic. What the here. Hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you plan to like open it before the pandemic? We, yeah, we had planned on opening it the previous. Well, we started getting to work the previous October. So okay. as we were starting to break ground, that was when COVID hit and the city locked down and there was no city permits going out. There's no building permits. So we got delayed about eight months on that. So now when you say breaking ground, um, do you mean you actually built something or you just renovated something? So it's uh, it's part of a mid-rise. It's called Share Downtown. So it's a bunch of apartments for a lot of artists live there, a lot of people that work in the area here. Ah. And uh, they'd Built actually... Built-in customers, basically. Pretty much, yeah. It's got 60 units there. So Smart. It's a cool little spot. And uh, I actually got connected with that because we were planning on building another part of town here. And the owner at Share wanted us to put some murals up. So mm. put some murals up and then he found out I was opening and just... Kind of want. I pitched him to the concept and nice. Yeah, moved right in. <laughs> nice. So when was when was the first time you did uh, artwork outside, like in the street or or on the mural or something like that? I'd say I had I had actually opened a gallery uh, called Get Up Gallery, and I was highlighting street artists, a lot of street artists locally, a lot of street artists from the UK, some from LA, New York, and I had an artist kind of fall out. I won't name names, <laughs> but it was about a week before the show. So I had linked up with uh, Miss Create. She's an artist out here in Vegas too. She's okay. a, she's from New York. She's from Harlem. And she just wanted to, we were doing like an art switch thing there. So there was like five artists, I think, and the six, they needed one more to kind of make the switch nice. work. So it was where we take a canvas and pass it around. And she asked if I created any art. And I said, well, I, I did in college. <laughs> so I went ahead and I kind of did a few little mashup pieces, you know, got them all printed out, brought them over and just started ripping things apart. And that was just kind of where it began. So as soon as that hit and it, it got a pretty good response, I just kind of started putting some stuff on the street and, um, I just kind of went from there. <laughs> now, how long ago was that? That was probably about 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's been a little bit. Just so our uh, listeners have an idea, how old or about how old are you? I'm actually going to be 40. <laughs> I'm turning what? 40 next week. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you feel? You about stayed that? out of the <laughs> sun or something. What the fuck? What Just kind of beer. moisturizer you want to you wanna plug your moisturizer you use? What the fuck, man? Because guys. Sid looks could, like a guy who uses beard oil to keep that beard like, nice and Well, he's like, got a good beard. I've got yeah, some yeah, beard envy. I've got <laughs> space envy and I've got beard envy. No, he's got a great fucking that, beard. Like, they'll keep their beard and then it looks. You know, it looks like straggly, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got beard envy for sure. Yeah. I, I think it's just the mask, like just constantly shaping it. So yeah, it's it starts selling beard shapers. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. cool, man. That's uh, <clears throat> sorry, my mic. My mic's not. We're so we're gonna kind of share and teach. What? What do you? Oh, my, hold on. You're stepping on my. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So if you couldn't hear me, sorry, guys. Uh, we're every single time we have to move the fucking. 
you know, a whole studio setup, man. Like some shit doesn't work. So <laughs> apologize. But anyways, man, dude, you know, the moment I walked in here, I thought this was some an art gallery. I mean, it is an art gallery, but I, I thought it was with a bunch of different styles of artists, man. Like, yeah. and most of this stuff is your work, basically. Right? Uh, yeah, myself and Tony. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's absolutely, there's, there's so many different styles here, man. That, that's what I'm saying. I thought I thought it was like a you, you know a bunch of different artists, man. But it's so so cool, man. I, I, I've actually got a few from my daughter over there. So uh, your daughter, daughter. <laughs> she's uh yeah she's ten right now. So she just kind of you too. You have a daughter. Started, well, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I, my twins are ten years old. Yeah. yeah, you did it right. You only did one, huh? <laughs> just one, but oh, sounded right like it was way. out of your control here if you had twins. So. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it, it was. Um, but so definitely, dude, you did it the right way. One and a girl. It's yeah. dude, like I know it's gonna be tough when <laughs> like the boyfriend comes and all that stuff, yeah. but from what I've heard and from comparing having them both right there, you know, a boy and a girl. <laughs> I've got a twin, a boy and a girl. Yeah. Um so much easier to raise a girl. It really is, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Yeah? Yeah. Well, she's just wanting to like make everything pretty and and you know be nice and everything. And you know, my son's always wanted to destroy things and <laughs> and and just see how much things can take, you know. And um, yeah, so it's it's uh, and they're always fighting. Well, yeah. Snip, does course, your daughter right? like an angel, just like uh, like you say? It, my or? my daughter is she's she's great, really. She's um superstar dancer. <laughs> she's oh, dancing okay. like thirty hours a week here. She's oh, wow. okay. fully dedicated herself and. Did that was see? another like quarantine like. What kind of dancing is she doing? Uh, We're talking hip-hop. TikTok here. No, 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 no. no. She's like. <laughs> Wait, Dude, there's actually... some TikTokers out there that are making millions there of dollars. Are. There it's, are. It's crazy. <laughs> no, she's uh every style of dance you can think about. She's she's out there doing it and she's having a great time with it. So. That's awesome. It's all passion and that just kind of keeps her focused. And when she's home, she's creating art as well. So. Oh, nice. She's kind of fun, you know? She's, she's a cool little kid. <laughs> now, you know, with, with my kids, um, I don't push the art on them. Yeah. Because that's the last thing that I would want, you know, if I had a father that was you exactly. know, an artist, I would, you know, <laughs> be like, you know, <laughs> hey, look, just because you're that, you know, doesn't mean I'm going to be that. So, yeah. um, and I, you know, it's interesting. I, I, it seems like my, my daughter seems to be a little bit more interested, and she just has more patience. Yeah. You know, when it comes down to they're having to do their little art projects for school and stuff like that, you know, my son's just trying to get it done, you know. My daughter will sit yeah. there and take her time and everything. Um, so uh, has your, has you, have you ever had your daughter work with you? Yeah, uh, quite a few pieces. Um, just kind of going through there, and I'll, I'll do some layers here, and I'll have her put some layers in, and then she just kind of took off and started doing her own. So okay. <laughs> and she's always concerned. She's like, I don't want to take your style, and I'm like, don't worry about it, like <laughs> – you're going to be way better than me if that's what you want to do. So <laughs> so does she, you know, like how often does she want to do projects? Um, I'd say lately with the dance, she's more focused on that. But like during lockdown, I mean, we literally stayed in our house for like seven months or something. Just didn't yeah. see anybody. Wow. Okay. So it was like we would cycle through certain things of the day and she, you know, she would grab some paper here and work on stuff. So. That's awesome, man. Yeah. She's, well, I mean, like I said, Teach, teach has been always telling me the challenges of raising kids inside quarantine, but I, <laughs> I highly suspect that's because he has two... two uh, Are you guys doing the homeschooling still? <laughs> yeah, still doing that. So In Vegas, so, it's like that? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. I think so she's yeah. on, the, on the computer doing Zoom class? Yeah, it's so frustrating. Um, oh, my God. But she's self-sufficient, so it doesn't, re- <laughs> it doesn't require me to be there with her. I, she's doing well so far, so... Man, yeah. Yeah, my, um, yeah, my kids... Do well with it when they when they want to. Yeah, uh, my son was having a big problem with it for a while because he's uh, he's got sensory processing disorder, which makes things a little bit tougher for him. And he likes being able to hug his teacher, yeah. you know, and hug his friends and stuff. And it actually helps him to focus more, yeah. you know. And he went from doing that to just sitting in front of that computer. Yeah, and man, it was it was tough. Um, I really, really look forward to getting back, getting them back into school. I know that you know we're trying to do it as safe as possible and everything. What are you? How are you feeling about that? It's it's you know <laughs> it's really hard to. I've seen all sides of the coin here. I've I've had friends that have had their kids, you know, young kids getting falling into deep depressions, suicide attempts. I mean, these are things that happy kids that would not have been dealing with this before athletes, you know, kids that are graduating high school and getting a chance to compete and 
you know, kids that are starting out and actually starting to get that momentum, they're not, they're not having a chance to do it and they're not having that social interaction. And, um, I know we're, we're all being safe. That's the main thing out here. I think we were talking about it earlier with artists where we're, a lot of us are so many, we're just introverted, you know, we don't really go out into many people and deal with that. So I think this has been a lot easier for us and adults to kind of process and say, we know how to be safe. We know how to do these things, but the kids, like I, I don't know what you were doing at 10, but at 10, I was out there skateboaring. Oh, dude, and, I was outside every yeah. day. We were with your friends. It's Yeah. <laughs> you didn't I'm have to schedule a date. On. Yeah. You know what I mean? A <laughs> schedule a play date. Do you have to do that with your kid? No. Thank God, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think about when I was 10, I mean, they just were like, you know, go. Yeah. And <laughs> there was no fence. There was no just down the street. Like, I, yeah. I where the fuck I could have gone? You know yeah. what I mean? They didn't have... They didn't have ways of keeping track of us then either. You know, yeah. when I was 10, you know, I'm almost 52 here. And so they didn't even have cell phones or anything. Well, speaking yeah. of, yeah. speaking of like growing up, like, you, you know, I'm so, how's growing up locally in Vegas, man? That must be like a crazy fucking experience. Really. I mean, well, you what know, part of Vegas? I mean, yeah. like, um, how close into Vegas are you? <clears throat> right now I'm, <laughs> I, I've moved around. I was actually like right in the city center here up until lockdown. Okay. And, in a smaller condo, we were cool. We were like down, downgrading the size and everything, and then we got locked down a month later. So. No, I'm talking about what, I'm talking about like when you grew up, though. <laughs> I, I grew up in the center of town. Yeah, uh, not the best area, and then we just kind of started shifting around. Until okay, okay. About high school, I got. So, did summers. you have like friends that like their parents worked at casinos and things like that? I feel, I feel yeah. like it's like if you grew up in Vegas, like you kind of just d- go to the casinos like as like a. Um, There's got to be some line of work. Yeah, right. It's like if you grow up in Disney, Orange County, Anaheim, like you're gonna have some people that work at Disneyland, right? You, you know exactly, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it's, I, it always tripped me out, like you know what I mean? Because I feel like Vegas locals, I feel like it's like a love hate relationship with the tourists, right? Because it's like <laughs> yeah. they feed you guys like all the money for sure, <laughs> right? But you're like these fucking tourists, you know? What I mean? They can't fucking like you know, you know they're coming because they come from all over the fucking world, man. Yeah. Like you know, what I mean. So as they growing up here, I feel like you get to you get exposed to. A lot of different types of people, even if it's just for like a brief moment. Uh, you, you know, I mean, it's like in LA, if you grow up, you're kind of in your own segregated borough, you know what I mean? But I, like I said, I was, Vegas is like a small town, but it's also pretty yeah, big. It's a melting pot. It's a bit yeah. of a melting pot. There's a lot pot. of diversity here. Yeah. Um, you, so, get, you get people from a lot of people from LA, a lot of people, from, my wife's from San Francisco. Mm. Um, Do you feel like more people lately have moved from LA after the pandemic, dude? I don't know. I haven't seen anybody. Oh. <laughs> how did how did uh, how did you meet your wife? I met my wife uh, working at Circuit City. <laughs> I, I had uh, I was a tennis player my whole life, so oh, I, nice. I went to college. I was on the uh, UNLV team. Oh shit! Blew out my shoulder and I was just bored, so I needed oh, something man. to do. So I went to work and <laughs> oh, I, I just met her there. So. How's your shoulder now? Old. <laughs> Yeah, no, I you can... know, everything feels a little weird when you hit forty, but oh, dude, it's you know what? Let me just tell you this, okay? I I feel you. Like it was it was like a cliff. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like you, you're building, you're building, you're getting stronger, and then you start, you know, not getting so strong, and and then things start hurting yeah. for longer. Things take longer to heal and everything, and then you hit forty, and it's like a cliff. Yeah, but let me just tell you this: a little bit of good news for you, okay? When I hit fifty. Not so much worse. I was going to say, it's probably just a continuation no. of 40, right? No, it, it, it wasn't like, you know, 40 was like, bam. <laughs> so when 50 came, I was, I was preparing. Yeah. I was preparing myself. And, and you know, it, it just wasn't that, that major drop off like 40 was. And I think it's because back in the day, like people didn't live much longer than 40, 45 I, years. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was it. And you, most of the time he died of was a toothache. A toothache that get one straight up into your brain and kill you. So here's a little uh, sidebar, folks. Brush your teeth. Take care of your teeth. <laughs> if they start aching at all, at all, as soon as they can, as soon as you can, go take care of that, man, because <laughs> it's just going to get worse. It's just going to get worse. It's never going to get better. Oh, but you know what? I'm sorry I got off on that, uh, man, but We're giving fucking dental advice right now. <laughs> I know. Well, well you know, we like to cover <laughs> everything. We like to let no, people know who they're getting to know here, you know? <laughs> we have some teach toothpaste for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see where this is going. Yeah. No, but you know what? I have a story about the fucking dentist, man, because I went recently, man. If you go to one dentist, man, some dentists will be like, oh, we got to pull that motherfucker out, dude. Like, you know what I mean? So always get a second opinion, man. <laughs> Because, like, dude, an implant will cost you, like, $1,000, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's just no joke, yeah. man. You, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's like, 
You go to different dentists, they're like, oh, no, we just need to, like, clean it out and, I don't know, remove, like, a part of it or some shit. You know what I mean? So, like I said, all, Snipped any, as uh, we're giving any dental dentist, advice, I'm just saying, stories. we might as well just fucking, I was, might as well just give my, my two cents, too. You, know? <laughs> you ever have any, 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 uh, any bad dental experiment, experiences? No, but uh, <laughs> I could fill your night with them. I've had so many root canals, and like my my teeth are porous and rigid, basically. So it's awesome if I want to whiten them, you know, because they'll whiten right up, you know. But because they have ridges and they're porous, that means that wait, you turn me you turn me way down there. No, you're popping the mic this way. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm a I'm a dentist daydream. You know what I mean? Like I. Like Even if, when you walk in, right? yeah, yeah, um, and man, you want to talk about some pain and like the anesthesia wearing off in the middle of a root canal and stuff oh, like that. Yeah, so good. I'm glad. That's good. <laughs> you, it's hard enough being an artist. Last thing you need is having to deal with with dental stuff, exactly. right? <laughs> How's the daughter? The daughter's teeth are good. She had braces really early. All of a sudden, I'm concerned <laughs> about people's teeth. <laughs> yeah, What's, what kind of what kind of episode are we doing right now, man? Well, Shit, no, you dude. know what it was. Okay, here's the thing. It was the age thing. You know what I mean? Age and, and you know, prolonging your life. You yeah, one of the, one of the life, themes of this show is constantly like, Teach tells me getting older is going to suck. And I keep on telling him, well, you had kids, bro. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, that's, tell that's him, the thing him. that aged you, man. If you, <laughs> if you want to be able to keep doing what you're doing for the most part, don't have kids. <laughs> Kid? Okay. It's still possible. Okay. But two at one time, that's, that's a life changer. You know, <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you find when you had kids that you f- actually focused in and got a little more efficient with what you're doing or, Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you have to. Cause time is so premium. Yes. That- you just have to get in there and get things done. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, Absolutely. I feel like I always tell teachers that if you have kids, man, it's like, all right, I fi- I'm finally in the mood to work on something. <laughs> I'm going to start off for five <laughs> minutes and then now I got to h- go handle my kids for three hours and then come back to this thing that, right? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much like how it is to have kids basically, right? So, pretty much. Like I said, yeah. you, you know, you got to like really, really, you know, love and want to have kids to take that time, you know? I mean, if you have like a million other priorities, like... You know, having kids is going to be like really challenging. <laughs> you know, yeah. if having kids <laughs> is your priority, I feel like it's like you know that's a good thing, right? You, you know, basically, it's like um, you, people should want to spend time with their kids, obviously, right? You know, yeah. so. But anyway, that's just coming from most the of them, anyway. <laughs> 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 but shit, man. Yeah, and I always say, right? My now, kids are getting to where they don't want to spend so much time with me anymore. We're not cool already. Anymore. Yeah. yeah, it's ten. It's it's when it starts happening. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah. You too. Yeah, I mean, she goes to dance conventions, and as soon as she sees her friend. Bye, Dan. Gone. Oh, <laughs> shit. See you later. You're just the ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the ride. Is she into gaming at all? No, she's not. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, yeah. We were actually playing Tony Hawk before I came here, though. She got me uh, Tony Hawk 1 and 2 because she knows how old I am. So <laughs> 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 It's all remastered now. And look, look, Daddy, I got you a classic. <laughs> yeah. So she's sitting there playing with me. And that's kind of fun. But. You, could, you could play it on the calculator now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Oregon Trail, you yeah. know? I'm just saying, like, nowadays, you can have, like, all those old school, like, Nintendo games in like one box. Oh, yeah. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we used to get w- one video game a year between me and my brother. These cost like 50 bucks, you know what I mean? And it's just like you had to collect all of those games, and yeah. now you can just have one cartridge and they have all of them inside, man. I know. You're born in the wrong fucking time, dude. You <laughs> like to play video games. You, you we know? had Tech Mobile for like 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Then Madden came out and was like, oh, well, you know, we'll do one every year. So, <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's, you know what? We're going to have a professional video game player on in a couple weeks and it's nice this guy makes a lot of money playing video games it's not like he just streams on twitch or anything like that but i I think it's like league of legends or something i don't even know these games you know what i mean but the thing is like he actually coaches like the american team for the company they have like you know tournaments and shit like that and there's like they they call it esports you coach someone (laughs) doing that shit they call it you're not intense enough (laughs) you're not Come on, we're gonna, sit up. You're not sitting up. That's the first problem. <laughs> sit up. We're gonna find out, man, because they call it esports, man. I mean, nowadays, like they have a fucking stadium of like entire kids watching like a team of guys playing video games. Have you yeah. ever heard of this shit, right? Have you the Luxor? They have a whole like arena. Oh, gee, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh my god, Vegas is on top of it for sure, man. That, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. You know? Oh, actually, you know, I went to uh, Area 15. Actually, yeah. have you heard of Area 15? I, I put a mural in there. Uh, a few oh, weeks ago, yeah. Which one did you put uh, up? Rocket Fizz. We did a whole, the whole wrap around there, okay, so it was kind of okay, fun. Okay, nice, dude, man. It's it's kind of it's a, crazy. It's it's a very interesting 
Um, do, you, can, do you know anything about who like put it together or anything like that? Because somebody had the vision to do that. I feel like it's pretty like amazing. I mean, I know the seed was Meow Wolf, so I think that's opening on the. If you're in town on the 18th, I think that's the opening day. So. Okay, so Meow Wolf, basically, uh, you want to explain to the... Uh, do you know anything about yeah. the background of it? Okay, uh, They're actually <laughs> out Meow of New Wolf, Mexico. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> they just create... They, they have like this giant warehouse in uh, New Mexico, I believe. So they're from New Mexico. I feel like it's the only thing to do in New Mexico, actually. I, I know. If you go to New Mexico, it's like, <laughs> what's going on in New Mexico? There's Meow Wolf. You, you know, I mean, that's pretty much... <laughs> But anyways, it's like an art exhibit, right? Like a public yeah. art exhibit. So I feel like it's not street art, but it's like semi-public art. You know what I mean? So I think it's kind of like in this realm. But yeah, so they brought it over to Vegas, right? Yeah, brought it over to Vegas. Uh, I haven't even seen it yet inside there. I've seen Area 15. Area 15 is just this whole collection of restaurants, bars, axe tossing. <laughs> like, it's, it's actually It's actually yeah. like a shopping mall, actually. You don't need any money to go inside, but... Everything is decorated like really, really cool. Like there's a skull. Like once you enter it, then then it's all white, but it's all these light projections on it. So it constantly changes like the image, and you feel like you're at a fucking yeah. rave or something. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But where is the axe throwing going on? <laughs> I think it's next to a restaurant called The Beast, <laughs> which is, is I think uh, Todd Simon. Is it Simon's contained? Place. I mean, is it like outdoor? Like chicken? Like if someone? No, I'm just. Oh my god, dude. Okay, because what I'm thinking about here is like. You get someone in there a little bit crazy, he well, takes have- an axe, and then just sees how far he can <laughs> chunk that thing over the building or something, right? You're well, walking down Las Vegas Boulevard or Fremont Street, and I all of a sudden here supervised. comes an axe. <laughs> Shunk! I mean, I think it's supervised. Like It's like a gun range, but you're throwing an I'm axe. I'm having flashbacks yeah. when the dude came after me with a hatchet is what I'm having, <laughs> is what it is. Well, he's asking if actually, have you, Teach one time when he was getting up in the street, had a guy with a little hatchet like... Come after him. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. He th- a little hatchet. What the fuck? Why do you say a little hatchet? It, it, looks it was like- a fucking hatchet. <laughs> okay? It's a hatchet, right? A hatchet is a hatchet. Yeah, no, no. It wasn't like a little six-inch hatchet, no, no, no. okay? Right. That would not have scared me. It was a normal-sized fucking hatchet. The dude coming at me with it. It was it was crazy, dude. I, I, I had just gotten up. I'm coming back. I'm taking pictures of the, of the box. And I hear this, what are you doing? What are you, what are you doing? You're the cops? And I'm like, Yo, what, the, what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> and by the time I saw him, he was he was running right at me. He was like a run walk. And he had the hatchet out. And he was coming at me to where, like, I, when I saw the hatchet, I froze. Yeah. I mean, if I had seen a knife, a gun, I, you know, I, I would have reacted faster. I wouldn't have froze because the hatchet just really... Shocked you, man. It was very shocking. Yeah. So, um, if... And luckily, right at the last minute, I slipped. I slipped him because he would have made contact. He was swinging, and he would have made contact. Oh, my God. So luckily, I, you know, I came out of my freeze, slipped him, and then just started running. <laughs> so, I mean, that happened in L.A. when teachers trying to get up. Anything like that happened when you guys try to get up in Las Vegas? I mean, are there spots that you guys all kind of get up at? Or I guess obviously people pay you for murals already. But yeah. I mean, you know, back to you, the question. Anyone ever yeah. try to attack you? <laughs> I think the closest thing was people getting near the scaffolding and kind of, you know, trying to give you a little fright, things like that. What? <laughs> Asking really? what you're doing there, you know. It, it, Nothing like that. I've never been chased with a hatchet. But who are the people, uh, like, is it just random homeless people on the street? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But yeah. it gives you a whole new vision of that Space 15 thing with the axe throwing, right? For sure. Like, <laughs> if I'm going there, I'm going to be freaking out Each a little has bit. An axe or you're just going to start training now. You yeah. just you have a backpack and... <laughs> That's, I should carry a hatchet now, really. No, see, like, we were talking about axes earlier. And then I said, that's why I said little hatchet, because I was comparing it to an axe. So I wasn't like downgrading the fact that somebody was coming I, at you with I, a hatchet. I understand You understand that. what I'm saying now? I okay? understand that now. But, <laughs> it, was a, it was a tiny axe. But, <laughs> but just when I hear a little hatchet and you're talking about what, what happened with me, it's just, I just had to correct it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> no, I not a little, I've seen a little bitty six inch hatchet before. And if he would have been swinging that thing in the eye, I would have laughed at him. I would have kicked him and like, you would have been a. Completely different situation, but <laughs> so, so do you still get up during the camp pandemic, man? Have you or are you doing mainly gallery stuff nowadays? More in other cities. So okay, so we we've, we've been traveling and doing. Oh some, shit! Where yeah. else, where else do you have you gotten up? Uh we were just in uh, Kansas City doing nice. a, doing a big. We did twelve murals there over like twelve days. <laughs> nice. we, we, How we, big? Went, we went How? up. We went back. Uh, probably the biggest one there was about thirty foot by twenty foot. <laughs> um, pretty much everything was like twenty five by fifteen. So. How did these come about? Uh, it was actually it was, it was dispensaries. Um, 
there was a dispensary owner here. He sold his dis one dispensary here, took everything over to Kansas City and bought 25 different um, spots. <laughs> And uh, wow. I, I guess just, he had a big dispensary wait, is it, here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it bought twenty five <laughs> from the one that he sold. Yeah, because it's, it's not legal out there. So, uh, I mean, it's it's legal for medicinal, but it's not legal uh, for oh, recreational. Okay. So. That's a, that's a weird thing right now about weed, man. It's like now it's like kind of like going mainstream. It's not even cool yeah. to smoke weed anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you know, what I mean, like kids don't smoke weed. They they pop zannies and fucking oxies nowadays. <laughs> like you know, what I mean? like and drink fucking codeine, dude. So the weed's for the old people now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hey, just There's... can't wait to see what my kids try. You know what I mean? Like, oh, jeez. No, but that's crazy. <laughs> imagine man. that with your daughter. I mean, it's like shit, man. I, I'm sure you don't want to no, do that, right? <laughs> you know, what I mean? she's, she's ten right now. She's dancing, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, we'll just keep her ten. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, what at what age do you do you start saying, hey, you know what? Like, um, there's these things that people are gonna want want you to try. Let me know. You know, before you ever fucking, I've, I've had that talk. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. How, 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 like, how does that go? I'm just curious. Like, Wait, when did you have? Yeah, it? When did you have it? Approximately. Yeah. When did I you actually have just it? had it this weekend, but I, I've had it like, <laughs> before. <laughs> See, I pick up on things. You're, you're like, <laughs> that's what I. I was feeling that. No. You're like teachers coming. If uh, you no, see God. meet him, and he's going to introduce you any drugs. Stay away. <laughs> Stay away. Just say no, okay, guys. You know, we're talking Just about arts. No. Drugs are going to come up. You know, it's, it's a thing that you know that we talk about. We, no, we, we had this discussion like uh, social media and cameras and phones and all this stuff. Like we didn't have oh, that as yeah. kids. No, uh -oh. so we ran around and the stuff got away with so many yeah. things. Oh man, why would we film ourselves doing that? Oh, you, have, we, no, you know exactly. They have, they have way more God. information nowadays. Like when we were kids, we had a lack of. Dude, if you wanted to find out about drugs, like. I mean, you know, you can look in your encyclopedia and look up <laughs> H, heroin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, marijuana. Oh, yeah. Look under cannabis. Like, <laughs> go to your C, C one, right? You know what I mean? But the thing is, like, nowadays, the thing, I feel like kids, they're, they're just smarter than us when we were kids, man, because... Yeah. Well, they like, have more information about it, too. Yeah, you know. more. Yeah, so, I mean, the only, I think the only worry is misinformation, too, a lot of times. There's so much information out there. If they follow a personality that gives them, like, some like wrong information man that, that i think that's like one of the biggest fears i think for kids these days you know so i mean i don't know all these like i'm sure your daughter follows like some youtube personality and stuff yeah. like that, that right <laughs> he's yeah. like oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah so that's what we got to be careful of <laughs> snip that's what we got to be careful of is is like when they're watching on youtube yeah because that's like we didn't have that that's a whole information highway yeah it's like a free tv network that I know. Never ends. <laughs> it's 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 basically a video encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, we had the, we had an encyclopedia <laughs> yeah. when I was growing up. If yeah. you wanted to learn about something, you go to the bookshelf, <laughs> and there was about one, two. Uh, you had all the numbers. Sixteen. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you had all the letters. Yeah, yeah the Dewey Decimal to, System. And <laughs> yeah. I know. I would go to the library, use the Dewey Decimal <laughs> System, check out V, and then be like, "All right, I'm gonna learn everything about V today, dude." <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had an actual encyclopedia set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, if you wanted to learn about something, you go to the encyclopedia, you know, and, and if the shit wasn't in there, then maybe you'd hope to see it on TV or a TV show about it or something, but you couldn't go research shit like that. And you couldn't Amazon the encyclopedia. Like, it had to be from the guy coming to your door, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think my parents yeah. actually did order yeah. it from someone who came to our fucking How door. How crazy is that, man? People just used to go door to door and sell shit, dude. Like, yeah. you vacuum buy, cleaners. Yeah, you want to buy this vacuum, man? Like, you, you want to buy these encyclopedias, man? You want to buy, <laughs> you you buy meat? Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, or, <laughs> like, people just, like, travel. And then back in the day, I feel like they, people were just more trusting you, yeah. you, you know what i mean and back then like oh, like oh nice salesman is coming to offer me products from the big city you, you know what Dude, I mean? people but, used to be able to get on airplanes without having to go through any kind of security yeah it's pretty crazy you know I my mean, dad used to work he would, uh it was in the military and every once in a while they go up to the pentagon to have some meetings up in the pentagon and he used to tell me they would just walk right in yeah. Well, also, shit, man. You used to go meet people like, hey, right when they get off the plane, you know what I mean? You have yeah. your balloons and everything Walk like that. Walk up to the gate. And it's like, no, now they you got to... the gate. Yeah. I remember <laughs> that as a kid, like our, our UNLV basketball team back when they were... I don't know if you guys know about UNLV basketball in the 90s. It was like, they're rock stars. Yeah. But we would always go to the airport and wait at the hangar for them, and my dad would put me on his shoulders, and I have the signs and all that oh, fun yeah. stuff, but... Yeah, so that, that, and wow. I can't even hear it. So, as a basketball guy from uh, Las Vegas, man, what team do you follow? I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm just curious because there's no like, um, 
Uh, pretty much every team that I've followed through the years has been because of my mom's family, and they're all from Boston. So oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. The only team that I ever followed from the West Coast was it was the Raiders, actually. Okay, so, and now they're here. And in now Vegas. they're here. So, yeah. what do you think about the new stadium, man? It's um, fucking beautiful. I haven't man. seen it yet. I mean, I've seen outside of it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting in. to get in there. Let yeah. us in. <laughs> when did they finish that? Oh, uh, right before the season, I think, uh, like September. Yeah, the players have uh, yeah. been playing, man. I mean, inside the new stadium by themselves, right? No audience or anything like that. But, but I'm, I'm, I mean, like once that shit opens up, man. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. You know, Sunday nights on Southwest <laughs> is gonna be real crazy. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh boy. Oh. Everyone coming from and LA. It's I gonna mean, be all the strippers yeah. going home, dude. And all, dude, the traffic. And all the Raiders fans. Can I just right? tell you the traffic? <laughs> I drove over uh, this morning. The traffic going from going the other direction. Oh my god! I've never seen it that bad. Yeah. Well, shit, man. People wanted to come out here for Valentine's Day. You know. You know. What I mean, there's like nothing to do in California. Everybody's like, well, it's, it's Chinese New Year too. Yeah, it's yeah. Chinese New Year, man. I mean, you're the ox, man. I mean, uh, I gave my uh, nephew, you know, his red envelopes in. So, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. What's, what's that about? So red envelopes, man. Red envelopes basically is like <clears throat> a tradition in Chinese uh, New Year that we give uh, the younger generation. Um, cash basically, Hong Bao. Yeah, Hong Bao. Hong My daughter's half Chinese. So. Oh, okay, okay. So you're you're <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Chinese. Okay, oh, awesome. Yeah. So he knows. He knows. Yeah, I, I know. I know. The he, he's, he, we, we, dra- <laughs> we drafted him, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So so basically, the thing is like, if you don't get married, actually, James likes you even more now. You realize <laughs> that, right? <laughs> you're basically family. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, no, because the thing is about Chinese people, it's just like honestly, there's so many like things you have to understand. Uh, and there's not really a, it's just like the traditions are so old that it's just like people, they just do them you know there's no like <laughs> yeah. you know it's so funny I'm, I'm so happy the common sense may ask, not be uh, <laughs> no I'm so happy you ask well, but they're, no all, they're, they're all very practical things so you're like okay like I'll follow these traditions like for example Chinese New Year it's a new year everybody mounts to make sure <clears throat> you clean your house before your new year okay if you have a feast on New Year's Eve that you get the whole family together actually and then um, you know you kind of just celebrate the, the the new year right and then you give your kids um, you give your kids a uh, uh, chi- red envelopes to have money inside so the older generation has to give it to the younger generation um, once they get married they don't get the red envelopes anymore so check this out that's Mike- why you haven't gotten married yet huh? <laughs> Get those red envelopes. No, no. I actually no. I am not married. I'm not married. Check this out. My grandma literally still gives me oh, fucking no. red envelopes, oh, and my parents always get mad heart. because they're like, "Dude, this guy's almost forty. He's literally, <laughs> he's literally yeah, not, yes. you know, getting yes, married." Grandma, give me the gun. But, but, but the cool thing is now I got to carry on that tradition to give it to uh, my nieces and nephews. <clears throat> oh wait, so yeah, who do you have to give it to? My brother's kids, basically, right? You know what I mean. So the next generation. Generation, right, and then um, there's also a tradition to give like once your parents so are it like sucks if you got a big family then huh oh yeah you yeah, yeah. Gotta save up all year to oh yeah I mean yeah <laughs> oh, exactly oh. you know and the, the, here's the thing about Chinese parents actually and your wife may know this and so the kids receive the red envelopes and then they just give them to the parents and the parents pocket the money a lot of times <laughs> so it's actually just like this exchange of formalities. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? It's not. It's not really like you're not really getting any money. Everybody just passing. Oh, how much did Auntie this give you? All right, we got to give. Yeah, you match the other family. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Right. You know. So, so like I said, it's just like it's a very practical thing. But at the end of the day, it's it's all like you know, it's a nice tradition, right? It's It's a custom, yeah. And actually, the the feast. I just reminded the story. The Chinese word for uh, new y- n- for year is nian. Okay, mm. nian is try try to say that. Teach nian. There you go. Yeah, nian. <laughs> Very good with Chinese. I yeah. did well in Shanghai. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Shishi. <laughs> Shishi. Yeah, but yeah. Shishi. <laughs> Close enough, right? <laughs> Close enough. Yeah, yeah. But see, check this out. Uh, nian was actually a mythical beast. Actually, that would come by and eat uh, people every single year. Okay, so basically, Chinese people have this like tradition of putting like a uh, kind of like a red scroll on the door kind of like to per- to ward off the beast actually <laughs> and uh, you know th- they all ha- always have feasts to kind of like uh, celebrate that the family passed another year that they didn't get eaten by the beast so this is like an age old fairy tale like tradition but if you really think about it it's kind of weird it's like oh every single <clears throat> family has to put something red on their door or else that you know, somebody will be killed. Doesn't that remind you of a very similar story in the Bible? In the in the Bible too. I mean, oh, there's a yeah. Bible, right? In this yeah. Bible story. See, this guy knows what's up because he knows that he and I am the the American, right? But, so I'm just saying, it's just really interesting that like cultures just have these weird traditions that these like age old stories that you know. What I mean, it's like 
things happened back in the day. Who knows where like these tradition stories came from? But I don't know. I always just like to cross compare um, cultures, man. But anyways, Chinese New Year, man. I, as a kid, I love it because we gamble. Um, you know, kids all get together. You have a big feast and you drink a little bit too. You know what I mean? So. Um, Good times, man. Good times. I feel like it's like the Christmas for Chinese people. You know, everybody goes home. I understand. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. There it's you go. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. They have and, like and your, your grandma, man. What a sweetheart. I know. <laughs> what a sweetheart, <laughs> man. She's still giving she still you that money. Me, she still slipped me a hundred. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like I said, it's a tradition, man. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Snipped. What uh, What do you got coming up? You got anything coming up? Uh, we're actually going to do a 60,000 square foot mural. So what? right behind you on the street out there, there's... I, I don't even think I can talk about it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> there's, it's, it's a lot of walls. Okay. So. Dude, how, I mean, how you do these like huge exhibitions, I mean, on the parking lots or just like walls all the time, basically, right? You know what Pretty I mean? Much, like, yeah, a lot of... Dude, man, like, how do you begin that process, man? I'm just saying like... like client tells you like hey i kind of want it in this vibe or like how does it usually go just really depends on the client some clients are very particular they say i want this and i want this vibe and i want these colors and those are the ones you really just have to pitch them a proposal and say does this work mm, okay <laughs> so basically okay. You just do like a little sketch up on your pretty much computer yeah. and then send them that yeah i've been working with uh tony who you guys are going to meet here pretty soon okay uh we have a I guess a duo <laughs> called the Wall Saints. So okay. we kind of get together. Oh, I like that name, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we call it the Saint Gallery here, and um, you know, I'll I'll do my part, which is more of the digital manipulations and things like that. He'll yeah. come in and do the the spray paint. Yeah, and we just kind of work together and, and get the he goes and procreate and kind of mocks it all up. And awesome. Man. We just keep it as close to whatever. Do you guys we do any pasting when you're doing the walls? Yeah, or yeah. is it paint? No, oh, it's a lot or of pasting. combination. It's a combination. Yeah. Oh. So. Okay. So, you know, we'll get up there, and a lot of people are just, you know, people think it's just putting up wallpaper. But, uh, well, dude, we'll put it up wallpaper first of all. It's fucking <laughs> hard, man. I'll, t- I'll tell you right now. You use a particular <laughs> type of paste or? Uh, Earl Lube. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. That's the plug right Earl there, Lube. man. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, if you use the code PTTP, you can get 10% off. I'm going to use that code. He doesn't yeah. even give me that. <laughs> there there yeah. you go, man. You know, here's, here's now the, he gives me the hookup. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, um, we also brought some uh, paint for you today, too. Basically, yeah. our Go Paint, man, and, uh, you know, Earl Lou. It only took us three years to get this fucking paint. That's it, right? <laughs> it's, dude, well, getting started as, as a small, you know, uh, spray paint line coming up is kind of like getting started at a fight club, yeah. really. You got to, yeah. you know. Instead of sitting outside for three days, you got to sit outside for three fucking years, <laughs> waiting your turn until they finally decide. Yeah, maybe we'll send you some stuff and you know work these guys got you. these guys got mil- can, uh, orders of millions of cans, man. Yeah. And then we want like all right, we want <laughs> nine sixty, <960. laughs> <laughs> the minimum, right? Nine hundred and sixty, not a thousand. Nine hundred. We get the wholesale, right? What's the MOQ? <laughs> No, literally, yeah, exactly, man. So it's like, you know, I, I would say about our brand, it's just like Earl Lube, man. It's made by artists for the artists, you, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, hey, man, of course you can get a Montana can, but, hey, we're making it, like, cheaper, and it's actually more paint, too. And, and you can use the yeah, Montana working with yeah. the OG of OGs of spray paint. Basically, the guy, spray that, paint. the guy that created spray paint. Nice. So how, how did that happen? How did well, I, I, they're one of my customers, basically, normally for my acrylic business. So um, they use my acrylic to make to dissolve it to make the paint. Gotcha. So we're just like, hey, you, you want to hook us up with a private label because, like, I think we have uh, some customers that basically we would love to develop this line, you know. And then they're like, all right, we'll give you a private label, man. And um, like I said, it took a really long time. I shopped around a few vendors, but I think Seymour Spray Paint out of Chicago, like they're the, the inventors of spray paint, were the best choice. And um, at the end of the day, we're really excited to uh, you know get these products to you guys, man. I mean. Uh, Earl Lube, right? It's like, you know, you go out, we paste with it. Go spray paint, you go out and do stencils <laughs> with it, man. Like, you know, keep it in the family. Not just man. stencils. You, it's, you know, you put any kind of cap as well yeah. on the uh, the can. Okay. So you can use Montana caps. So you can use all, you know, fat caps, skinny caps, whatever you want. We got okay. two colors right now, black and white. So you can do some throwies with it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you can do some burners well, with it. I mean, it. that's that's everything you need with, uh, you know, going through there in the stencil work, right? The, the yeah. black is is black and white are the kind of the two colors you need. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, exactly. that's why we started off, just because <laughs> yeah. of me, what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell yeah, man, dude. It's pretty much been an hour, man. I mean, but, uh, it, you know, time always flies, man. Especially in person. I love doing this in person, man, because it's yeah. like... It's way more. Uh, I mean, we can't. How bring... can people find you? What's the best way to find you if they want to, you know, get some work done or just check your stuff out? Pretty much Instagram, just at snipt, snipped, 
And uh, wait, we got to ask. We're most active here. <laughs> um, what, what basically is Colt Thirty Three? Are you affiliated with? How are yeah. you affiliated with that? So Colt Thirty Three. Uh, quickly, we we met at a uh, Jordan brand. We did a whole WePay installation. I linked up with uh, You Kill Me First. There she is, Dan Forty Five. We knocked out this big installation in a couple of days. We had some people that kind of fell off that were working with us and kind of got together and said, hey, let's let's do something. We worked at Life is Beautiful. Uh, oh, dude. Yeah. I haven't been to that <laughs> festival yet, but like I said, I, I aspire to uh, – uh, we actually asp- I aspire to do, do like a, a stage there one day with some art, man. That'd so, be cool, yeah. like I said, maybe we'll get in touch with the right people through you, man. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Life is Beautiful. Amazing rave done by Insomniac, you, you know, and uh, – Obviously, you guys do the art there. That's super cool, man. That's cool, yeah. yeah, a, yeah. Lot of, a lot of this art around here is from Life is Beautiful, actually. You bring it out. Hell a lot yeah. of the artists here and kind of getting that street art accepted. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know what? Nice. I, I'd say that was probably the biggest push here was Life is Beautiful, kicking that off and bringing out D-Face and Shepard Ferry, and then we got wearing and Decline from out here. Um, we just kind of all got together. Oh, wow. Well, okay. I didn't get together with them, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, was yeah. kinda, it was my first experience actually being near the big boys, you know, oh, okay, like getting okay. that chance to kind of put my little wall up and then they've got their big walls. <laughs> and I never thought that I'd be doing bigger walls. So dude, okay. this well, has been kind of cool. Well, dude, just, you do great work. Thanks. Yeah. I'll just stay consistent. Say, like, and yeah. You doing it, it's, it's just going to happen. So yeah, that's, it's, uh, it's been a fun, fun experience here. Hell yeah, man. And you know, we hope that, you know, we have a lot of stuff in the works. I showed you uh, some secret stuff on yeah. the videos <laughs> like, earlier. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So we love your help on any of the stuff we do, man. And, uh, you know, just uh, link with you guys more in Vegas, man. We hope since LA's shut down now, you know, we can come over here and play a little bit. You, you we got we got to get out to LA too once you guys start to open up. Hell yeah, man! Yeah, Hell yeah. Hopefully it's soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, to the audience, thank you guys for listening and hanging out with us. Uh, follow us at PTTP Show. Smith, and thanks again for having us. Oh, in thank your you studio, guys for brother. having me here. Yeah, yeah leave us a review it. on iTunes. Uh, and pretty much, yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. it. Thank you guys. Take care. Appreciate awesome. It. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Peace.